So I'm finally making a video about how to make some cornhole boards. My name's Scott. I go by Moss Boards. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook. In fact, pause the video right now. Go follow me, Moss Boards, Instagram. If you have any questions, if you want to order some boards, message me on Instagram. It's probably the best way. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make the tops for your boards. We call them the decks. All right, we'll split this up into a few different videos. This will be the first one, and it's got about four or five steps. You can do most of these things with just some normal power tools that you have in your garage. Uh, if you don't have these tools, there's a bunch of other ways to do the same steps, but this is the way I like to do it. It works for me. There's a lot of other ways, so share your opinions in the comments if you want. If you don't, have at it. All right. So what do you need to do to make some nice cornhole boards, the best boards on your block? First thing, you gotta find the right wood. I like to go to a local lumber yard called Peterman Lumber here in Las Vegas. Check that out. Beauties. All right, what are you looking for? You're looking for three quarter inch birch plywood. You can also use maple. Make sure it's three quarter inch. If you buy the half inch stuff, your boards are gonna bounce. Check the edges, make sure they're nice and clean, no big voids. The stuff at Home Depot, that's gonna give you some big old voids, you don't want that. The worst thing is finishing a beautiful set of cornhole boards. People play on them for a little while and then pop, the top of the board opens up, there's a big empty spot underneath, now you got trouble. Had that happen a few times, so now I'm gonna buy the good stuff. I like domestic birch, I like Baltic birch. Both of those are great. Domestic has beautiful grains, Baltic has the best edges in the business. So you choose. I like to use both. All right. You can have them cut it or you can do it yourself. Personally, I'd rather cut it myself. I don't trust the people to cut my wood for me. So this method uses a Craig AccuCut. You're going to rip down the entire length of the board. And then after you cut all your boards, then you're going to cross cut. Now, before you cross cut, make sure you always, always, always tape the top and the bottom. You have to do that. It's going to make sure that you don't get too much tear out. Tear out's the worst. It's a lot of cleanup. It's going to look ugly. So make sure you tape at least a couple times around and it's going to cut down a lot on your tear out. Okay, measure from both ends and you're going to measure your exact 48 inches. Now, plywood's usually cut a little bit longer to allow for the blade. So measure from both ends, mark it in the middle, and then you're going to start your cut. I like to line up a right angle, set my saw in place so I can see exactly where the blade will be, and then clamp this little guide in place so you know you're getting exactly a square cut. If you've measured right, you taped it, you have a sharp blade. Now you know your edges are going to be nice and clean. Check that out. All right, now you've got your tops cut two foot to four feet. Now you need some perfectly circular holes. You want a nice messy floor, all your cutouts. And this is the method I've found to be best. Sure, there's a lot of ways to do this. You can use a six inch hole saw. You need a very powerful drill. You need a strong arm. It's gonna be tough. You're gonna have some tear out coming through from the hole saw. And that's a one use tool. And you know, those are kind of expensive, um, cheap. So I used my router for a long time. I used a few different bits. I used a circle jig for a while. And then I came up with this method using a base plate template. So I made this template out of plexiglass 
and it fits a six inch base fixed base router just like this it's a cheap ryobi router with an up spiral quarter inch cutting bit this seems to be the easiest smoothest cleanest way for me to cut these holes it's not as fast necessarily as a hole saw but man it's easy and actually this is one of the steps of the job that i really like the most I hear a lot from people what a pain it is cutting these holes and getting them just right. So if you can find a method that works for you, makes them nice and clean, super easy, man, stick with it because you'll thank for yourself later. Here we go in real time. It takes about two minutes or so per board. Basically, I just line up my template, clamp it in place, all four corners. This template has to be super secure. You can't let that slip. If it slips or if your router jumps over, you're gonna have a ruined board. It's no good. It's gonna go in the trash or you're gonna have to find something else to do with that wood because you cannot slip, so clamp it heavily and now you'll see this cutting bit has a plunge tip so that means you can just drop it right into the wood no pilot hole required make sure you drop it somewhere in the center you don't want to drop it too far out because then you're going to mess up your board so you're going to drop it just on the inside of where the cut's going to go and then you're going to push to the outside edge of the template and then follow that all the way around. All right, there we go. Pretty simple. It's usually the best way to go. Now you wanna clean up those edges. Personally, I like a nice rounded corner on my boards. It's a little bit of a signature. There's a few of us doing this out there. It's a little bit of work. It doesn't help them play any better might help the bags a little bit it's mostly just for looks this is simple enough you're going to use a flush trim bit with the bearing on the bottom and make yourself a little template the template is going to have the radius of the curve that you want so this radius is the same as a craft uh, a craft paint bottle cap so i just trace that onto this little piece of wood and then used my belt sander to get a nice smooth corner. You're gonna clamp that corner to the bottom of a board. Since I made this video, I put some little blocks so that it lines up a lot faster. Little blocks attached to that radius template. And then your flush trim bit, and you're just going to trim off that corner. Simple as that. Yeah, it'll burn a little. That's a really old router bit, so it's burning up quite a bit. You're just gonna sand that off, it's no big deal. So now you're gonna do that to all four corners. Once you have one board done, you just stack them up and use that as your new template. So now all you need to do, add a new board to the top, clamp it in place, and then go around all four corners and round those off. All right, now we've got our boards, holes are cut, corners are rounded off. Now, this is an important step in my opinion. You wanna smooth out all your edges, the top edges, the bottom edges, around the hole edges with a quarter inch round over bit. This is the one with the bearing on the end. It's gonna ride the edge and smooth over all your edges. Gives you a nice clean surface to hold on to. It looks better much higher class board if it has these nice smoothed over edges also it's going to help your bag life bags are going to catch that edge also if somebody drags the board a little bit on the concrete it's not going to chip up so it's going to help with the life of the board too really simple step it's really quick 
Helps if you have a Palm uh, handheld router like this. It's a little easier, less bulky. Or if you have a router table, lucky for you, I'm jealous. I don't have one, but this little Palm router works great. So there you go. The only other steps are to sand the surface. I would use 320 grit paper if they're already pretty smooth. And make sure you check all your edges. Make sure you sand those a bit. If you have any little voids that need to be filled, use some wood filler and then sand those down when they're nice and dry. Now you got all your decks all lined up, looking pretty. Stack those flat, unlike this picture. Make sure they don't curve over time until you start using them. And I will talk to you when it's time for the next step. Have a good day.